In this video, we're going to be looking at some harder trigonometric integrals. So these are the four examples that I'm going to go through. And the thing that you've got to keep in mind are the trigonometric identities uh, that involve sine squared and cos squared. Okay, so there's the obvious one. There's sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Okay, but there's also that cos 2x identity. Because cos 2x, remember, is cos squared minus sine squared. And that can become either 2 cos squared minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared. So these identities that we must remember are going to become very useful. So if we start with number one, integrating sine squared, a lot of people think that, right, I can go immediately into writing this as sine x times sine x, and then using integration by parts. There is a problem with integration by parts with sine squared because it keeps on going on and on and on and on forever, OK? And it doesn't work out well for us. So what we're going to do instead is use a trig identity. We're actually going to use this one, the one with cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared. So what we want to do is we want to rearrange that. So cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we're going to add 2 sine squared to both sides, subtract cos 2x from both sides. Then we can halve both sides, and we get this identity here. Sine squared is a half, take away a half, cos 2x. So I can replace this integral with the integral of 1 half, take away 1 half, cos 2x dx. OK? And this one I can integrate, OK? It's not uh, in any way fancy now. So a half integrates to a half x. Now the half cos 2x. Cos 2x integrates to a half sine 2x. So a half of that is a quarter. So minus a quarter sine 2x. And we're going to have that plus c constant of integration, OK? Now for the second one, the integral of cos squared, once again, you could go about this using integration by parts, but it's not going to work out too well for us. So we're going to use the other identity for cos 2x, 2 cos squared minus 1. So if we rearrange this, we can add 1 to both sides. Ooh, still got 2 cos squared. And then you can divide both sides by 2. So a half cos 2x plus a half is cos squared. So I can replace the cos squared in the integral with 1 half cos 2x plus a half dx. The half cos 2x is going to integrate to a quarter sine 2x. And the half integrates to a half x. And you've got that plus c constant of integration. OK? Now, for number three, we've got sine cubed, OK? Now, we don't have any identities that involve sine cubed, OK? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to write this as the integral of sine x times sine squared x, OK? Now, the sine squared we can replace using this uh, identity up here as 1 minus cos squared, OK? So we're going to write this as the integral of sine x times 1 minus cos squared x. So let's see what happens there. We can multiply that out and get sine x take away sine x cos squared x dx. Now, that doesn't make it look any nicer, but this part we can integrate using integration by substitution. Because we've got the derivative of cos x here, or a form of it, that then allows us to use integration by substitution. So we're going to use u equals cos x as our substitution. 
Um, now, before we go any further, then probably what I should do is actually split this integral into two pieces. Okay. Now, the reason is because I'm only going to use the substitution over here. Okay. So if u is cos x, then du by dx is minus sine x. And so dx is equal to du over minus sine x. So the integral of sine x, I know what that is. That's minus cos x. Then we've got, take away the integral. Now sine x has been uh, not been replaced, so sine x is still there. Cos squared is replaced with u squared. And dx is replaced with du over minus sine x. Now the sine x's can cancel, and that minus sign can cancel with that one there. So minus cos x plus the integral of u squared du. So we have minus cos x plus one third u cubed plus a constant c. And then you must replace the u. So we've got minus cos x plus one third of cos cubed x plus c. And that is the integral of sine cubed. Okay? So if I just erase that starting bit for the moment, we write the answer in there. Cos squared x plus c. Okay? So that's got us that one. Now we're going to use a very, very, very similar method for the integral of cos cubed x. Okay? So we're going to split it up. So we've got cos x times cos squared x. The cos squared I can replace with 1 minus sine squared. You can then multiply out that bracket. And then I would probably separate this into two integrals. So you've got the integral of cos x dx. Take away the integral of cos x sine squared x dx. Now the integral of cos x is just sine x. So we just need to deal with that integral there. We're going to do that by substitution. This time the substitution is the sine x. So du by dx is cos x. So dx is du over cosine of x. So we have the integral of cos x is sine x. Take away the integral of cos x times sine squared, so u squared, times dx, which is du over cos x. Those cosines cancel. And we're left with sine x. Take away the integral of u squared du. So that's 1 third u cubed plus c. And then you want to put your u back in, so the sine x. So sine x minus a third sine cubed x plus c. That was a cube there, wasn't it? Okay. That just reminded me I must have copied it down wrong. Okay? So that is how we can go through that process. Uh, number three, number four, they require you to spot some things, okay? That is why these are harder integrals to solve. Um, but it's likely that you would be led through a part of the process. Um, but this spotting uh, of how to integrate um, cos x sine squared by substitution is something that is worth knowing, definitely.